any storm warnings in the Dallas area for today? Have any of our storm chasers checked in yet? It's big. It's real big. They've never had anything like a mile and a half wide tornado. It would be far greater than anything that they've even dreamed of. The tornado was one and a half miles wide and, com and completely engulfing Dallas. It's not a question of if it's going to happen, but when it's going to happen. If that thing hits ground, we're in big trouble. The city of Dallas rises tall and defiant, right beside the convergence point of two massive weather systems. The area is called Tornado Alley, and it sees over 1,000 tornadoes a year. More tornadoes hit Texas than any other state. But so far, Dallas has escaped a direct hit. If we had a huge tornado hit the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and particularly Dallas, it would be one of the worst American disasters in history. The fastest tornado winds ever recorded were in Bridge Creek, Oklahoma in 1999. Winds of 301 miles per hour killed 26 people and left total devastation. But experts say the tornadoes can and will get worse. It's only a matter of time before conditions spawn a super tornado, one that is bigger, faster, and packs higher wind speeds than any before it. You are about to see what happens when a super tornado hits Dallas. The people here will first witness an outbreak of smaller tornadoes. Then when they think it's safe, the city will be torn apart by the biggest tornado ever seen. But right now, this Dallas day is just like any other. Toby, I'm tired of telling you, son. Let's go. Stop yelling at me. I'm not yelling. It is thought that the heat wave way. from the south could cause temperatures to soar as high as a century mark. As the weather on the day of the super tornado will start beautiful and clear. In the morning, the sun will shine. And by afternoon, there will still be little warning that Mother Nature is on the warpath. You're going to be late, and you're going to make Dad late, too. Let's go. Hold on. Just let me get my ball. This is a customer announcement. All passengers on flight 118 to Dallas, please report to gate 12. Hello? Hi, honey. Hey, babe. How's everything? Oh, fine. Toby, get off to scouts, okay? No, we're just about to leave this minute. Toby! We better hurry. I know, we're just running a bit late. I'm gonna tell him I might be late picking him up, okay? My flight's not in yet. Really? What's the problem? Some storm out west. Yeah, something's brewing here, too. Listen, I better get to work. I'll see you tonight. Have a safe flight. Okay. See you later. The first sign that Dallas is in line for extreme weather comes from a small patch of darkening clouds in an otherwise clear sky. Three ingredients create the groundwork for the super tornado. First is warm, moist air pushing up from the Gulf of Mexico. Second is a blast of dry air rushing in from the Rockies. The zone at which they meet is called the dry line. 
the air on this boundary becomes unstable and starts to lift upwards, quickly creating a thunderstorm. But a third and final ingredient is needed to turn this into a tornado breeding ground, and this will come a little later in the day. Even in the early stages of an approaching storm, there are signs that things could get worse. Dad, what is that? I'm not sure. This doesn't happen very often, but usually it has been a water spout, which is a tornado in water that's produced fish falling from the sky. Water spouts are funnel-shaped clouds formed by powerful updrafts over water. If fish are swimming near the surface, the winds whip up the water and the fish with it. They are pulled up the column and into the cloud base. When the water spout hits land and dies, these creatures fall back to Earth, sometimes many miles away. As the day goes on, small thunderstorms begin to grow, pumped up by hot, moist air from an extreme heat wave in Mexico. With a constant supply of fuel, the storms billow upwards and spread out. High-altitude winds begin moving them east toward Dallas. But 30 miles away in the city, there is only one small clue. The wind is picking up. Have fun, Toby. Mom will be here to get you in about an hour. Okay. What are you doing here? Scouts is canceled. Didn't you see the sign? Emergency management team, the mayor's office, and emergency services are all based at City Hall. There are five people working in emergency management, but this can rise to hundreds during a crisis. Their offices are two floors beneath the ground. This is the start of a day that will test them all to the limit. Where's the chief? Dennis is running late, so that makes you the boss. Oh, man, Anna's headed straight for it. Where's Dennis? Are you listening? I just told you. He's running late. He'll be here in a minute. National Weather Service, please. Have any of our storm chasers checked in yet? No. Well, where's the storm now? This is James Abbott, Dallas. What's the situation with a storm out west? Has the FAA grounded any flights? building over Texas begin to explode when perfect disaster super tornado returns. People have experienced turbulence, but this thunderstorm will take a turn that makes this flight a terrifying ride. It's about to become a supercell. A 
A supercell thunderstorm is rather rare, and unlike normal thunderstorms, a supercell has a lot of rotation within it. It's anywhere from three to four, maybe five miles in diameter. Not all thunderstorms become supercells. Differences in the speed and direction of the wind on the ground and at the top of the supercell are called wind shear. This creates updrafts causing the heart of the storm to rotate. It can transform thunderstorms into supercells. However, only 30% of known supercells ever turn tornadic. But predicting if this storm will produce a tornado is for the moment beyond our technology. Making a call on whether to warn residents or evacuate